Are you tired of what it costs to fill up your coffee mug? Or even more so, are you not happy with the quality you're getting? Well, watch the rest of this video and I'll show you how to drink probably the best coffee you've ever had in your life for a fraction of what it's going to cost to go to Starbucks or a specialty coffee shop and buy something that's probably not as good as what you can do at home. Stay tuned. I'm going to start right off by talking about home roasting. Now that seems like it's out of touch, out of reach for uh, a lot of people. It really isn't, folks. I got to tell you, this is one of those things that once you start doing it, you'll wonder why you didn't start years before. Uh, home roasting is kind of similar to baking your own bread. Uh, yeah, you can go to the bakery and you can get uh, gourmet bread, but you know what? It's just not as good as if you do it yourself. It's not as fresh. So I'm going to walk you through the basics of home roasting. For example, this bag of uh, Colombian unroasted beans uh, is available online, delivered for between six and eight bucks a pound, which compare that to what fresh roasted uh, gourmet beans cost you at your local roastery. Uh, or even the grocery store. So uh, basically you have the ability to go out and get something like this quick and easy uh, from Amazon. You can order from a specialty uh, shop like uh, Sweet Maria's that I, I highly recommend. Get some great beans and a better quality coffee. Uh, what do we do once we get it? I'll show you. All right, when I get a bag of unroasted beans, I will go ahead and dispense it into some uh, reusable paper and plastic uh, coffee bags, which are a great value. You, you got a, it's 20, 30 cents a pop, uh, but they make your roasting and your storing so much easier. Okay, use a scale, uh, measure out, in this case, uh, eight ounces of coffee. and bag it. Okay, a quick tip. When you get done with your last bag, you're always going to have a little bit left over, so I suggest creating a bag uh, of leftovers. And what this is, is just uh, a fraction of an ounce or an ounce or two of leftover coffee from all your coffee green bean purchases. And when you get to eight ounces, you have the ability to do a roast that's unlike any other you'll ever do. It's made up of lots of different types of green beans, and uh, it can be really interesting, folks. It's kind of fun. And in just a few minutes, you've now got, instead of one five-pound bag of green beans, you've got... 10 8 ounce bags. Now, 8 ounce is kind of a typical home roaster uh, dose, so that's what we're going to go with here. And now I'll show you what to do now that you've got 8 ounce bags of green beans. And that brings us to the prickly subject of which coffee roaster you need. Uh, there are a lot of them out there, folks. Uh, I've used a couple different ones. I used one that used a uh, induction kind of heater and it was invisible. I like this one uh, because of the fact that you actually have a clear carafe where you can see the progress of the beans which allows you to fine-tune the roast you get which I find to make a much much better end result. The other one it was uh, honestly I think the roast might be a little bit better but if you can't see what it's doing you're gonna have a lot of roasts that come out too dark too light um, you're going to waste some beans and uh, some time, so I'll let you do your own research. I particularly like this one. Uh, it has worked very well for me. I bought it used for uh, just a few hundred bucks. Um, it's had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of roasts still running strong, and I suspect will do so for a long time. So at any rate, um, to do a roast, you just simply open up the carafe. Uh, and then you take one of your pre-packaged 8-ounce bags of green beans, pour it in, 
and turn the unit on. Set the temperature, which I always set to the highest, which is 482 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, you set the time, which is kind of hard to read in the sunlight, but I'm going to set it to uh, 16 minutes. It's going to vary depending on ambient temperature, the size of your beams, uh, a lot of other factors. But at any rate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process. And generally, that's about it. Now, you will do this outside, folks. You will not be roasting inside because contrary to what you might believe, cooking coffee smells pretty good. Roasting coffee smells like burnt cardboard. So it's not something you really want to cohabitate with. Um, I'm going to set a timer for 14 minutes so I can come back and I can double check on the process, see how my beans look, and I'll fine tune the timing accordingly. And at one minute, the machine helpfully tells you that you've just got a minute to go, which is a good indication you want to check out your beans. You can see uh, they're already approaching a uh, fairly mild roast, but uh, with a minute to go, and based on the amount of cooking that's going to continue as the process ends and it starts to cool down phase, uh, they will get a little bit darker. You can, if you listen closely, you can actually hear the beans cracking. That's an important part of the roasting process. I won't go into all that, uh, but you can actually hear the beans cracking. They will go through two cracking processes in a typical roast, uh, but you can look up that and, and do the research yourself. So at this point, I'm just going to let it run out the full 16-minute process. That looks to be about right. Um, Okay, and there it just switched to the cooling mode. It's turned off the uh, turned off the hot air, and it's now blowing cold air through the carafe and out the exhaust port. And by the way, when it says hot, don't touch, it means it. So now we're just going to let it cool down. It's going to take another 10 or 12 minutes to get it down to uh, under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the process has come to an end. Uh, the beans are cooled down. The craft can now be released. Um, and you can see that I've established a uh, roast level of city, city plus or so, which is just how I like it. So now, get these in the bag. Okay, I use a uh, small, small container to capture the beans. Most of them. I usually do this in two increments, but I'm just going for one, just for the simplicity. And basically I use that to transfer the beans into the same bag. And there you have it, folks. Eight ounces of freshly roasted Columbia Supremo beans uh, ready for brewing using your favorite method. Now, very often I'll go ahead and I'll do a couple bags at the same time, uh, just to save having to get the roaster out additional times, but others prefer to do it every three or four days or however long eight ounces will last you uh, for the absolute freshest beans you can get. And one of the pieces of maintenance you're gonna have to do is to empty the, uh, the chimney because it captures the chaff, which is an inevitable side effect byproduct of the roasting. Okay, I've removed the, the little cap on the side and I'm dumping the chaff into my plant here, which as you can see, seems to love it. And the next process in converting your beautiful new perfectly home roasted fresh beans into a glorious cup of coffee of some sort is the grinder. Now grinders are very, very, very important in the process. Now if you're going to do something like a French press process, uh, I use this particular grinder. Both of these are burr grinders. That's very important. The little uh, whirly blade uh, $10-$15 grinder that you can buy online, they 
kind of work, but they create so much dust by the time you get the grind to the proper point uh, that your results are just not going to be right. You, it's, you really want to give your beans every opportunity to shine, and to do that, they have to be ground to perfection, and the burr grinder is the only way to do that. Uh, this one I've had for, oh my gosh, probably 15, 20 years. Uh, it's noisy, but it gets the job done. It takes 14 seconds to grind a perfect, perfectly ground dose of coffee for my uh, 1.5 liter French press carafe. This is the bigger trick. This is for my espresso machine for doing lattes, espresso. Uh, and folks, I got to tell you, the grinder is as important as the brewing process. So you don't want to you don't want to spend a little bit of money on a grinder. You want to actually invest in a decent grinder uh, that will do a really really good consistent job of grinding so in this case I'll just put some of my beans in here and I don't need the full bag because uh, three or four days worth is nowhere near a full bag uh, but basically at this point uh, you can set the grinder up I've got this one I found that uh, I grind to a size of 18 which is a very arbitrary number but that's what works for me you can set it up for one or two shots you can set your grind amount per shot it's very very easy to use and uh, it will give good results every time and one of the really nice features of this particular grinder is it's set up to just for pressure from the portafilter to start the process And I got to tell you folks, having a, a coffee station pad like this is just a really good idea. I'm going to use a tamper to uh, level the beans and then a tamper, a actual press it down to get a little more pressure on it. I'll clean this up before I brew, but there we are, a single shot, uh, portafilter, ready to go. All right, now that we've got our single shot portafilter ready to go, it just rotates into place. Uh, the machine warms up literally in seconds. Normally I'll dispense directly into the cup. I'm just going to use the uh, glass uh, container here so you can actually see what the uh, espresso looks like coming out of the machine. So you can see it's a very quick process. I'll just let it run its course and you can observe the, the beauty of a properly brewed cup of espresso. And for this particular machine it comes with its own uh, steaming carafe and I find that just above the line on the built-in thermometer which you can see on this side, is about right. And this particular machine does have the ability to automate the steaming process. All you have to do is tip the wand up, set the steaming carafe all the way back so that it's on top of this sensor, push this button, and it will, depending on your settings on these, these two uh, buttons up here, you can set the heat and the amount of foam you want. And it does a reasonably good job. It's uh, it's not quite barista standards, but it's not bad. But personally, uh, I find it to be better to leave the wand in its forward position and uh, and do the process like they will at your local bistro. It takes a bit of practice to get it perfect, but what you're doing is you're actually injecting a bit of air under the surface of the milk. That and the steam is increasing the volume, making it lighter, fluffier, more wonderful, and you're getting that beautiful cream kind of consistency out of plain old, in this case, whole milk, but skim milk works well. Uh, even oddball things like almond milk 
work reasonably well in this particular machine. So that's uh, that gives you a lot of options. And the end result will be spectacular. And you can watch the temperature gauge down here to get it to your particular preference. Um, I usually go for around 160. And I'm going to turn it off by pushing the button again. And at that point, I'm ready to build my coffee. I'm not really going to go for a fancy design on the top because I'm just not that much of an artist. But there you go, folks. A beautiful, beautiful latte for a small fraction of what you would pay for one at your local uh, coffee house or bistro. And one housekeeping item. You do want to wipe your steaming tip off every time you use it uh, because otherwise you end up with milk solids in these tiny little holes down here that will plug up the wand uh, eventually, actually pretty quickly. And then this particular machine, you notice it's uh, going to start the process once I push the wand back into place. It actually pushes hot water through to clear the tips. Does a very effective job, sprays it into the tray down here. And so you also have to, when you're, you're done with the process, empty the tray into the sink. But Quick and easy, and you are good to go again. But if you're more in the mood for a traditional cup of coffee, I sincerely recommend staying away from a drip coffee machine, which traditionally just brews at the wrong temperature. It's just, the, the end result is generally not that good. Uh, go with the French press. Uh, you could do that several different ways. This is the, this is the very common, uh, inexpensive, readily available one. You'll see these at all kinds of uh, discount stores. It does a great job. The process you can see better in the clear one because uh, it's made with a double filter, just a filtered screen. You put the coffee in the bottom of the carafe, you add hot water, you put this in, let it brew, and then push this down to contain all the grounds underneath, and leave all the marvelous coffee above. Okay, this one I have gone with personally because it's insulated, it's stainless steel, it's easier to keep clean, and it keeps your coffee warm for a good long while, so uh, it's also a liter and a half which is a pretty awesome thing so basically I've got this one set up you want a very coarse grind for a French press so I've got this one set to its full coarse mode and I found with this particular grinder that a 14 second grind is just what you need to brew a liter and a half of coffee and Here's the end result. That's that's how much we get from 14 seconds of grinding on this machine. It is very quick. Um, I normally do this on the sink because you will sometimes spill a little. But there you go. We're ready to brew. And this brings us to our next tool in our arsenal for perfect coffee. And that is a um, temperature controlled teapot. Okay, so basically what this does is it allows you to preset a particular temperature you want to brew at. Uh, this particular one has 160, 175, 180, 190, 200, and boil. Um, so I like to brew my coffee a little cooler. I like the 180, although many French press uh, aficionados are going to go for 190 or even the 200 mode. Um, the hotter it gets, the more it releases a tannic acid. Some people like that. depends on the brew and the roast. Um, you can play around with that and find out what works for you. But basically, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a... Uh, actually, just right at 1.5 liters of water. Select 180 degrees. And start, stop. And basically, the kettle will let me know when it's reached the full temperature and beep at me. And yes, I used filtered water. Why not 
Coffee's important. It's worth it. And once the coffee water has come up to temperature, you get the you get the beep, at which point you're ready to pour into your carafe. And again, we just have this beautiful, fresh ground, fresh roasted coffee in the bottom of the French press carafe. Uh, it's a good idea to stir it up to extract the most coffee goodness. So I pour a little bit, swirl it around to get a good uh, soak on all the beans to get everything going, get the process well and truly started. Uh, I don't fill it to the absolute brim. And at that point, I grab the lid and I will put it down. Now, it's, it's important to note that there is actually a beveled portion of the lid that allows you to pour. If you turn it to the side, it keeps the heat in. And speaking of which, uh, one of the things I do is I will keep the, uh, I keep the carafe on a ceramic tile just to insulate it a bit more to uh, keep the coffee hot longer. So now the next step would be come over to your local timer and set a uh, four minute timer. When it goes off, you have a liter and a half of beautiful French press coffee ready to go. And four minutes later, a slow press of the plunger will drive all the grounds to the bottom of the carafe, leaving only beautiful coffee up top. So at that point, turn to pour. and enjoy a really amazing cup of Colombian fresh roast, fresh ground, fresh brewed, French press coffee for a chump change. So what's it gonna cost to do all this? All right, it's not gonna be real cheap, I gotta warn you. I just went out and entered all the equipment you just saw, plus the coffee, into Amazon, just choosing the first option I saw that matches. I didn't look for the best price. Uh, and so basically, the stainless steel French press, 30 bucks. Uh, I calculated my coffee. I use about two ounces a day on average between uh, a pot of French press, a carafe of French press coffee, and... Uh, Probably at least four or five uh, lattes a week. Uh, that comes out to about two ounces a day. So that uh, works out to 45 pounds a year, which uh, I've entered in here. So there's nine of these being uh, entered into my, my uh, shopping cart. The temperature-controlled teapot. The grinder I use for my French press. The grinder I use for my... Uh, Espresso machine, which is much more uh, fiddly to do, so you want to get a good one. Uh, the Bambino Plus machine is uh, is a five hundred bucks. Uh, what does that all come out to? If I proceed to check out, uh, let's go to check out and scare my credit card. Okay, with everything else, with tax and everything else going on there, it comes out to twelve hundred and thirty six dollars. Okay, that's a lot, but let's take a look at the real economy of this thing. Okay, the coffee roaster itself. Uh, assuming the same one I'm using, there are a lot of options. Some of them quite a bit less. Uh, some of them are more. Uh, $650. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that in. Assume an 8% sales tax uh, and free delivery because, hey, that's what it says. So let's go take a look at our totals now. So after buying all of this equipment, the home roaster, which is $702 delivered with tax, uh, other equipment, everything I showed you on the Amazon page, uh, another $900. Bucks. I'm figuring uh, $335 for coffee based on needing 45 pounds, which is about two ounces a day, which is about what I'm using for uh, a carafe of uh, French press coffee plus a latte a day. Uh, the milk comes out to about $30 a year based on uh, using six gallons, uh, which is uh, several ounces a day at $5 a gallon, which is probably cheaper than you're paying. The cost per day for the first year, 
of your coffee experience will be $5.39 this direction, this, this uh, method. And that's the first year. So let's compare that to Starbucks. And I just went out and got some pricing off of their website. And I'm figuring two cups of coffee plus a latte per day, which is pretty close to what uh, my wife and I put down. So that's pretty much apples and apples. And these are small cups and small lattes. Um, and quite honestly, I'm getting more than two cups out of my carafe, but we're just going to leave it at that. And this is a small cafe latte where the one I'm making for my wife would probably qualify as something larger. But let's, let's go ahead and do it that way. You add this up, you get $13.45 per day. Now that's without tax, that's without tip, and that's without the cost of driving to Starbucks. Or even walking to Starbucks, if that's what you're doing. So you look at the difference... $5.39 per day for the first year versus $13.45 per day. That's quite a bit of difference, but it, wait, folks, it gets better. So you look at the second year onward, and the cost drops dramatically on the DIY side of the equation. There is zero equipment cost. Now, honestly, there's going to be a few bucks for cleaning supplies and such, but it really is not going to factor in on this. Uh, coffee, again, about 335 bucks. The milk's 30 bucks. Comes out to a whopping dollar a day, again, versus 13.45 a day. Now, it may not seem like you're really bleeding that much money buying your coffee from a uh, coffee shop or bistro or whatever, but it does add up. So let's take a look at five years okay uh figuring the starbucks totals again for smalls not including tip tax driving comes out to coming on 25 grand hard to imagine come over here your diy option is about 3400 bucks saving you over twenty one thousand dollars over the course of five years um okay folks that means you could be driving a nicer car how's that sound at any rate, what I need to stress is that this $3,400 is for drinking better coffee that's fresher roasted, fresher brewed, it's convenient, it's where you live, you don't have to go get it, and you will be saving a lot of money. And this is only the first five years. It just keeps on going like this forever and ever. So, folks, I, if you follow my suggestions, you're going to end up saving yourself a small fortune on your coffee habit and you're going to be drinking much better fresher coffee nothing to lose everything to gain so i hope this helps i hope this uh will at least make you think about the option of roasting brewing and making your own coffee at home versus going out